Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the program. My name is William Hemsworth. It's great to be with you all for another episode. I am pleased to have my guest, Amy Brooks. She's the founder and president of Catholics Online. She has a heart for community and a vision for spreading the faith across the internet through collaboration. She leads the Catholics Online community with dedication and enthusiasm, and she works daily to promote and support its members and help their amazing ministries reach their target audiences more effectively. Amy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, Thanks. My pleasure. I was uh, very grateful to receive your email a few weeks ago through our mutual friend from the Lego Church Project, uh, Mr. Kramer. Great guy. Love what he does. It's a lot of fun. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself for my for our audience that may not be familiar with you? Sure. I My name is Amy Brooks, and um, I was a teacher for 14 years, and my husband and I became parents through adoption. So when I became a mom, I was 36 and I had been teaching for 14 years and we, I got a year off. That was like one of the, the great benefits of where I taught. And when it was time to go back, I just kept feeling my head go like this. I just couldn't do it. And, um, I wanted to work. I just didn't want to work. I mean, you're a teacher, you know, like it doesn't end at three. You just, you put your whole self in it. And I just, I was so excited to be a mom. I wanted him my son to get that attention. So I tried different things and people said, oh, you should blog. And at first I was like, no, because <laughs> I thought it was online diary. I didn't really understand what it was. And then when I looked it up, it was like, oh, if you can cook or craft. And I was like, I can't do any of this. <laughs> but I started, my blog is prayer, wine, chocolate, prayer, wine, chocolate.com. And I started that because we wanted to adopt again. And I was like, okay, well, we could barely afford it with our two salaries. So I was a Catholic school teacher. And um, now we only have one salary. We have an, another mouth to feed. And I thought, well, there's got to be a way we can do it without um, hiring an adoption agency. And I'll just figure it out and I'll blog about it so that other people who maybe feel intimidated by the cost of adoption won't be, because I think that's a really sad thing that people won't adopt because of the financial part. I don't think Absolutely. that should be a thing. So that was my idea. And I also thought it would be really cool to have Catholic gift guides around Christmas time because I thought it's Jesus's birthday. Why is no one giving a gift like a miraculous medal or just anything that has to do with Jesus? It's his birthday. And I thought I could find some really cool things. So that was like how I, why I started Prayer Wine Chocolate to do those two things. And it was like, God was like, you're so cute. <laughs> you think you're going to do these things, <laughs> you know? And I did do the the gift guides and I did like start really like researching and connecting with pro-life organizations. And I, I found a lot, but really it was God that brought us, we ended up adopting twins <laughs> and it was- That is awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. It was all God. And in the meantime, I had connected with- other bloggers and other Catholics online. And what I found was the secular world of blogging was really good at supporting one another and sharing each other's content. But the Catholic world, it's so ironic because you hear Catholics say, be not afraid all the time. But it was like they were afraid to share each other's, everybody was a competitor. Yeah. And I'm like, no, the secular world gets this. Like you build each other up, you share each other's the content. And so I tried to start these, what I was learning from the secular world in already established Catholic groups. And it was like, people were like, who is this person? <laughs> Cause I, I, I was new to the game. I, I didn't know it. I didn't really, you know, know everybody. I just knew was getting to know people. So I ended up starting my own group, which is Catholic social media influencers. And I didn't ever even heard that word. It was because I went to a conference with my, they, it was called Philly Social Media Moms. These were some, you know, recipe bloggers and fashion bloggers. And that was the, the, um, the conference was called Increase Your Influence. So when I came back, I like became aware of this word influencer and influence. And I started a Catholic group on Facebook. And all the ideas I had been getting from a couple secular groups, I implemented and in invited Catholics to do. And there was a strong group of us that were like, yeah, we need to do this. And um, then eventually I thought, I don't own Facebook. So I need mm -hmm. to have something that is mine. So we started 
catholicsonline.net and this summer like you could if you still type that in it'll go to catholicinfluencers.com we switched over our website and yeah so that's how all of that came to be <laughs> yeah. well a couple things it's hello fellow parent of twins uh, number three and no four way. of mine are twins so it's kind of no crazy way. how that's working out especially with yes. some of the stuff we talked about before we started recording um yeah. but it's funny you talk about the competition and when i first started blogging i started blogging back before i came before i came into the church officially and even the protestant world was that dog eat dog and the catholic world is just the same this ultra competitive and like you said it shouldn't be that way we're here to build up the kingdom right <laughs> but but for some reason we're trying to <laughs> this is mine that doesn't make sense so yeah. you, you started catholics online and what was that process like uh, what did you have any obstacles in starting that did you have any people asking like why you're doing it well so I really have to give a shout out to Sarah Estabrook. Sarah Estabrook has a blog called To Jesus Sincerely. And mm -hmm. she had reached out to me right around the time I started this group. And I actually had like one group that was kind of accepting of what I was doing, but then I didn't do a blog link up and I got thrown out of the group, which is I asked her. But um, so Sarah reached out to me and she said, I'm trying to get in touch with other Catholic bloggers. She was just starting her blog. She reached out to a bunch of people and she heard crickets. And I said, oh, I just started this group. Why don't you join this group? And she really helped me in the beginning. She built our first website, never had built a website before. Um, so her and I really um, worked very well together. And we had like a solid 20 people that just got it. So um, really the community is the, the beginning, but the website I thought was, I was like, well, people need to know where to find us. You know, what if somebody's just searching for some kind of Catholic inspiration? And um, again, it was like, well, also I'll own this. So if anything happens with Facebook, I have something else. Um, yeah. So I think a lot of people got it and um really it's the community and the website is has is was slower to kind of get started you know to get people to use it and i really encourage even the people in our group to use it you know to connect with people and i think that it served purposes for other things than i thought but it's still a great way to see you know if you're looking for other bloggers to connect with or if you're a blogger and you want to connect with an artisan or a Catholic business and maybe talk about becoming an affiliate or just doing a trade-off, a barter. Um, and, you know, now, and we also have, we have sections for speakers and ministries as well. Wow. So it's really, you know, become, we had like one or two people join that they were Catholic, but they were like a realtor. But we've narrowed our focus. Like, I believe this platform is people who are consciously trying to spread the light of Christ online or with a business and they use online. So we have like Scott Williams from Sock Religious. Like he owns Catholic business, but it's very event, like based on evangelism. I don't know if I'm saying the right word, but it's based on evangelization, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's that's our thing. And, and we have the, the idea is if you connect a ministry with a business or a ministry with a blogger or a ministry with a podcaster, that you're helping both of them. And you're ultimately helping to, you know, spreading God's gospel, the gospel in the world. So, right. So how do you go about linking uh, groups together? Well, we're all in that Catholic social media group, the artisans, right. the speakers, the ministries, everybody who runs a platform that is in the membership is in that Facebook group. So um, we do Instagram threads, like, you know, just drop your Instagram, leave some comments, share it in some stories. If it moves you, we do like a regular thread, but we also like have some podcasters that have other people on their podcast. Um, I do a lot of gift guides to get the different artisans and businesses on something like first communion gifts. And then I throw, you know, 17 businesses in one guide or whatever okay. we find ways we actually have virtual meetups which is how i heard about you we had just a virtual zoom meeting with about eight of us talking and how do you make different connections and john from the lego project said 
oh, well, I, the Bible Catholic, I've been on his a couple times and he spoke highly of you and I reached out to you. So we just help each other network in different ways. Okay. Can you give us an example? I know this is a loaded question and I don't want to make you feel like you're leaving someone out by asking this, but what are some examples of the people or businesses that you've, um, you have on your, on Catholic influencers? Oh, no, absolutely. So Sterling Jakewith is a Catholic coach. She focuses really on women. She's a convert too. And she has a couple of podcasts. And so she's been in our group for a while and she started a Catholic coaching business. And Christy Walker, who was a blogger and writer, is now the Catholic sobriety coach. And she has a Catholic sobriety podcast. So Christy says to me all the time, if it wasn't for your group, I would have never met Sterling and she changed my life. Wow. So Sterling coached her. Now she does this whole Catholic sobriety podcast ministry. So that's like one connection that happened. Um, we have this man, Greg Johnson, in our group. Him and his wife own the Little Catholic Box. And he has also started this um, email magic. He really helps with people writing their email newsletters and keeping customers and getting repeat customers. So a lot of people in our group have got connected with him because he was in our group and I interviewed him. We have like talks like this kind of, we call them tip talks in the group. Okay. Um, yeah. Emily Ricci, she's a marketing, a uh, Catholic marketing network. She is a uh, Gloria marketing is her business and she helps with marketing. So I connect people with her. She's incredible. She really helps me because I don't have a business background. You were saying you teach business to middle schoolers. I know nothing. I had to take a business class in college and it, I thought it was going to be simple and it was confusing to me. <laughs> so it's really helpful for people like me that just started these like at home jobs because they were mothers to get connected with people that understand networking and marketing and advertising and, and just technology. So right. now I was looking on your website and you have different um, membership tiers, I guess you would call it. Can you go over those for us and what some of those benefits are? Yeah, so we used to just have the yearly one, but we um, changed it up this summer. And really, that's the best. The annual membership is the best because life is crazy busy. So mm -hmm. one month, it might be a little more active in a group than another. But I'm always very conscientious of people's budgets. So I wanted to offer the monthly option. So I think the monthly option is like $25 a month. But if you go annual, you are spending less than $25 a month. Uh, one thing we've done the past two years, which I'm praying, do me a favor, keep it in your prayers, is we do this huge Christmas catalog. And um, we get we make it digital so that you could just click on the gift and, and be in the shop and purchase the Catholic gift. But we also have an option where you can print it out. Because I'm of the generation where the Sears catalog would come home and that feeling of nostalgia to write your Christmas list, it, it gives me chills. It's just such a joyful memory. And now we do get the Amazon catalog, we get a Target catalog, and my vision, and I think I shared this with Sarah, Mary Claire helped me, she has Twelfth and Blossoms, her business, she designed it last year, it's phenomenal, is to have this in our homes so that when people are you know, the Amazon catalogs coming in and the Target catalog and the kids are making their list that there's this other option because um, we live in a golden age of Catholic gifts. You know, there are Catholic toy makers that are, I mean, their stuff is great. Mm -hmm. And um, like one member is Maggie. She has a saintly heart and she's actually a, I think she's an occupational therapist or a speech therapist. So her toys are not only Catholic, but they will help children with fine motor skills and speech. And awesome. it, I mean, there's just phenomenal things out there that Catholic families could have to teach the faith to their children, to decorate their homes in a way that's modern, but centered on faith. You know, we, our homes are a domestic church and, yeah. um, and Christmas is Jesus's birthday. <laughs> so we really can have, I mean, there's so many with, I guess with the dawn of Etsy, really allowed people to tap into their God-given talents and create gifts and shirts and just it, you name it, that, that glorify God and are useful or things that are useful, mm. you know? So 
we want to get that in the homes. My vision this year is to contact parish pastors and say, can you put this, put some of these in the back of your church? So when, when Amazon catalogs and Target catalogs are being delivered at homes, families can pick these up and have them on their dining room table as well. Yeah. Or even a, well, you said, cause you said it was digital, even a link that's yeah. sent out by the religious education department, you know, something like that to yeah. the families. There's a lot of things you can do. Like I said, so many great things out there. It just blows me away whenever I come across something. And I'm so thankful for everyone doing that and following following their gifts and their passion and following the leading of the Holy Spirit. So what would you say to someone who is maybe listening, maybe who has that gift, but they're like terrified to even start. They don't know where to begin. Like they feel alone, I guess. What, what would you say to them? Well, yeah, that's the thing about feeling alone. And I think that's why I'm so glad God allowed me to, allows me to do this because you're not alone and you join our group. I will introduce you to many people. <laughs> um, yeah, I be not afraid. It's like such a cliche, but it's, you just, just do it. And especially if it brings you joy, what I think it was St. Irenaeus that says the joy of man is the joy of God is man fully alive. I think it completely butch butchered that, but if no, you got it, you got it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like if writing brings you joy, right? If creating something brings you joy, do it and share it. You'll be surprised how many people. I mean, it. I enjoy this work. You know, I found, like I said, I have found other jobs that were work from home. I graded SATs that stressed me out, <laughs> the SAT essay. Um, I watched other, my friends' kids, and that was fine for a while, but this is enjoyable, you know, and I just feel like, you know, God comes alive in us when we really find something that glorifies him and, and it, it's our calling. He, he created certain talents in all of us. And to see these talents come alive and, and the variety of ways that people are able to do it. I mean, you could do it. And you, if it doesn't work out, then you stop. Right. You know, you're not committing your whole life to just trying it. Give it a try. And what's great now is you don't have to buy a website. You can just start an Instagram account. And that's free. You know, I, I would go that route because Facebook is so. It's really, um, you know, I don't think anybody sees anything you post. <laughs> You know, it's kind of, it's very difficult with the algorithms, but Instagram still seems like something if you have a creation and you want to share it or YouTube. Mm -hmm. I seem to get more traction on stuff with TikTok and I know people have their issues with TikTok. Yeah. But, but I seem to get, if I post um, just an example yesterday, I posted a video yesterday, got a thousand views. I posted on Instagram, I had 50 mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes it's flip-flopped. You just never know. Right. If but, you're so I looked at TikTok once and I'm like, I'm dizzy. It's so fast, <laughs> but it is the number one, you know, if you're comfortable with TikTok, if you're on TikTok anyway, you might as well put God's light on there. Cause I'm sure 100%. God, it needs more of God's light. Um, but it, yeah, it depends on what you're comfortable with. I think TikTok's probably the best, but I just can't get myself. <laughs> I can't get myself over there, but if you put no. this on great, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Insta Instagram Instagram is great too. I, I mean, I'm pretty much on all of them, and it freaks my students out when I say, "Yeah, I use TikTok." I was like, "What? No, that's where the kids are, guys." Let's be honest; that's where they're right. at. So, if we want to evangelize right. that next generation, we gotta get out of our. Some of us have we have to get our comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. yeah so I'm on your I'm on, looking on your website. Um, again, where our guest is Amy Brooks of CatholicInfluencers.com. Um. Of course, you have your blog on there. You post some good articles there. You have a list of, of your services. Now, to become a member, you have to apply. Can you explain the application process for us? Basically, when you're applying, you're putting all your information that's going to be on your listing. Because each person that applies is on our directory. So, but we do ask, are you a practicing Catholic? Like, We want people to to understand that this is a Catholic website. We are a Catholic community. And if that doesn't float with you, then don't bother, you know, kind of. Um, so really most of, you know, that question is asked. If you're referred by someone, we have a line for that so we can um, give them a little thank you. 
And, um, but most of it is what are your channels? What is your description of what you do? What section do you want to be listed under artisans, business ministries, et cetera. And then once you're done filling that out, that listing goes up on our website. And then you'll get an email from me so I can friend you on Facebook and invite you to our group because you can't find our group by searching. We made it secret because people were random people were trying to invite were and be in the group and it's only paid members can be in that group. So yeah, I think that answers your question. If it doesn't, yeah. let me know. And yes, it truly is secret because I tried to find it earlier today. Oh. I did try. <laughs> yeah. All yes, right. we're super secret. <laughs> no, that's fine. I don't know Nothing if I about... should undo that, but I don't know. Uh, and honestly, there is so much spam out there. Um, I know what, what the four persons, for example, I'm, I'm an admin on there. I'm an admin on Catholicism Rocks as well. And there's always spam trying to come through. So I don't blame you for doing that. Yeah. Not one bit. All right, so, so they get put on. They get put on the directory. People could search, and then they could connect from there if they wanted to do anything with those with those individuals. Well, they're they're then they're in our Facebook group, and there's a lot of discussions there all the time. Okay, gotcha. so that really connects people, and then we started doing virtual meetings as well, so people could just talk like you and I. Okay. So, what have you learned through this whole thing of setting this up and getting this group together? What have you learned personally about it? About just togetherness, ministry, all that good stuff. God is in control and God will never be outdone in generosity. Love I it. would say that two things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Again, everyone, the website is catholicinfluencers.com and Amy Brooks is our guest. Amy, thank you so much for being on our program today. This um, is great. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, it's been great. Been great talking with you. And we got to do this again sometime. And if there's any people that um want to connect out there, please shoot me an email. I'm glad to help spread your message as well. That's why I'm here. That's why I do this. I love just Amy. The cool thing about this, and yes, I teach middle school, but doing this, I've talked to people all over the world, and that's just so fun to me. And it's so cool because I'm I'm this introverted guy, shy, but somehow God lets me do this outside of this this would never happen so <laughs> yeah. but but i've rambled thanks so much for coming on i really appreciate it oh thank you this is great god bless how powerful is cox internet powerful enough to let your band members in vegas phoenix and rhode island jam like you're all in the same garage get gig speeds powered by fiber from cox it's internet built for tomorrow today Cox, always building better. Download speeds up to one gigabit per second. Cox Internet is connected to the premises via coaxial connection. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch -chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.